All right, the Temple of Amon Re and Hypostyle Hall in Karnak, Egypt, uh, New Kingdom. And this is 18th and 19th dynasties because each family is going to continuously add on top of what is already built. Uh, cut sandstone and mud brick. So when we talk about this piece, this relates to creation myths. So in class, we're going to talk about what is our, as a people, what is our creation myth? Where do we believe that humans come from? And of course, it's going to be either um, religious or it could also be scientific, right? Everybody has kind of grows up with their own different ideas of creation myths. This is the biblical creation myth of God creating the first man, Adam. And then you've got Eve kind of peeking out like, hey, I'm here too. Um, but what is the Egyptian creation myth? Do we know? Anybody? Anybody at all? <laughs> okay. So this is the Egyptian creation myth. Um, there was first a vast cosmic ocean of nothingness, dark and directionless waters. This vast nothingness was referred to as Nun. Out of the watery silence rose a primordial hill known as the Benben. -Ben. Just kind of like popped up there. From atop this hill, the creator God proceeded to call all things into existence, right? He started creating other gods, and then those gods started creating things, and that's how to, kind of how creation all came about. So we are going to relate that to our temple. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start labeling things that we have on our temple. So go ahead and draw these dots. This is an alleyway of sphinxes that started at the entrance and went really far. Um, the avenue of ram-headed sphinxes continued towards another temple, Temple of Luxor. So this should be pointing. Is it, there it's pointing. All right, this like really thick, she's thick. This is a really thick, heavy wall. And this is called a pylon. This represents a horizon and it is covered in reliefs that glorify the pharaohs. So you can see a picture on your note page where you can kind of see the front of it that would have been covered in relief carvings. All right, then in the middle here is an open courtyard, open air courtyard. So you would have been able to have, see the sky and have light come in. And then I want you guys to draw an arrow. No, okay. Um, so then right next to the open aired courtyard is a hypo style hall. And I believe we've talked about it before. Every time you see circles, those represent columns. If this room or this space is filled with columns, that is a hypo style hall. I have no idea how it got the name hypo style. That's just what it is. Um, and I want you guys to kind of draw a square around and kind of block it in. So that would have been a higher roof than the rest. So those columns there would have been higher than these other columns. And there would have been windows called clear story, clear story windows allowing in light. So I tried to give you an illustration of what that looks like. So these columns in here would have been larger creating a higher up ceiling there. And then these windows here and here would have been the light source coming into this dark room that's filled with these uh, columns. The shape of the columns is really important because they reflect these blooming papyrus reeds. So you can see this kind of triangular shape of like a blooming flower. That's what the capitals, the capitals are the top of the columns and the capitals reflect the shape of the papyrus. So here's some more pictures of what the, um, like a field of papyrus would have looked like. Blooming papyrus reeds, and that's what the actual bushel of papyrus reeds look like. And then this is a picture of the columns from down below looking up. Right now the ceiling is gone, but there would have been a ceiling there at the time. Okay, so we're gonna continue on down our path into the temple. So those two dots here represent obelisks that one of them is still standing. You can kind of see it in your picture and the other one is gone, but obelisks have a pyramid top which reflects the Benben. -ben. Um, the Benben -ben is that first bit of land that came out of the um, vastness water that was nothing and it kind of pointed up just like a pyramid. 
Um, the history between for the obelisks. So things have been added on later on. So both of these obelisks were put up by Queen Hatshepsut. You could say hot chicken soup if you can't think of her name. Put up by Queen Hatshepsut. They're about 97 feet high. That's really tall. And then when the Romans conquer all, the Romans took down one of them and brought it to Rome. So Constantine took one of them down. Um, this is Barge visiting an obelisk. So this is in Washington. And the obelisk still today represents the first Western civilization, which is Egypt. All right, so moving on. Now, as we go through the temple, we get to this section here. So actually draw on your plan. This is the sanctuary that would have housed the sculpture of the god Amon-Re. And then only priests and pharaohs were allowed into that sanctuary. All right, so as you are on this journey, as you're on this path, the ground, the floor level is actually rising. So the floor level gradually rose while the ceilings that's over you got lower and your spaces continuously got darker, right? You went from this open air, here I have it here. You went from an open air courtyard into the clear storied windowed hypo style hall that's filled with these papyrus reeds into then these small dark chambers. So by traveling on this journey into this temple, you are um, symbolizing the journey to the beginning of time. All right, so this is from the Khan Academy. I'm gonna read this to you. This kind of also says a lot better what I just said. So conceptually, temples in Egypt were connected to the idea of Zeptepi, or the first time, the beginnings of the creation of the world. The temple was a reflection of this time when the mound of creation emerged from the primeval waters. The pylons, that's that thick wall, or gateways in the temple represent the horizon, and as one moves further into the temple, the floor rises until it reaches the sanctuary of the god, giving the impression of a rising mound like that during creation. The temple roof represented the sky and was often decorated with stars and birds. The columns were designed with lotus, papyrus, and palm plants in order to reflect the marsh-like environment of creation. The outer areas of Karnak, which was located near the Nile River, would flood during the annual inundation, an intentional effect by the ancient designers, no doubt, in order to enhance the temple's symbolism. It's amazing that was intentional. So it's talking about the location. So here we are, we're right here, right along the Nile. And here's a picture of the Nile flooding. Um, so the Nile would flood annually. So the temple itself would actually, as it, the temple got higher up, it would actually act as a mound rising out of the cosmic waters. It's pretty amazing. All right, so I do want you to write, I didn't put it on here, sorry. Um, as far as the function, so think about how this is similar to a ziggurat. So the function of this place, it was created to worship the gods. So it's very different from a pyramid. A pyramid was built to protect and worship, um, be monumental to the Pharaoh, who is a god in human form. This is actually paying tribute to the gods. Uh, also similar to a ziggurat that only a Pharaoh or the priest could enter the sanctuary, right? Just like a ziggurat, only the priests or maybe some upper elite could actually enter into the temple and had a rising mound. So actually had elements that rose up to be higher to the gods or to represent um, the ben-ben, the, the act of creation. Also for function, I didn't put it on here, but we need to write it. Um, the priests would also come and bring offerings to the gods. And then for context, as far as the time, this started in the Middle Kingdom and then was added on by New Kingdom pharaohs. Yep, that's all I got. <laughs>